Today we are going to do a lab configuration on read version 2 which involves the use of IPv4 and also read page submission which involves IPv6 communication. So in this lab itself, we are going to configure the IPv4 addresses and IPv6 addresses on all the devices as shown. But in order to, as the configuration itself is, is duplicate in nature and is similar, we have already pre-configured R2 and R3 and PCB and PCC with its respective IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. But I'm going to at least show how to configure the basic in IP addresses on the interface itself and on the PC by making use of R1 and PC8. But before we start to configure IPv4 and IPv6 on the devices itself, we need to do some basic configuration on the routers and switches. And you can see that in this lab, we have actually five devices. And since the configuration are duplicate in nature, or we're going to repeat doing it five times, there is an easier process by making use of a pre-configured text file in order to escalate the configuration process. So I'm going to open a new text file, and I'm going to type in those basic com commands that are needed in a basic configuration of the router. Like for example, to disable this and look up. Okay. Another useful icon that you want to make, take note of is the exclamation mark. Okay, because in exclamation mark in Cisco router and switches, it signifies as enter key. Okay, so we're going to make use of the exclamation mark between each command line that we have configured to signify that in actual fact we are actually doing a configuration and doing enter after every command that we did. Okay, next, host name, R1, exclamation mark. Okay. We will enable the service password encryption to make sure that all our passwords are being encrypted. Next, let's configure our encrypted privilege as a key password, enable secret, which and the password we're going to give is class. Then our line console and line video password. In this case, line console zero. As mark, password we're going to give is Cisco. Okay and login okay we're also going to prevent unsolicited message from appearing okay when we are doing our configuration so in this case we're going to enable our login synchronous you can use a shortcut as well and see okay followed by line bty then zero to four okay so for most model of cisco router we only have five virtual terminal port we, that's why we need to have zero to four and in the case of switch normally you will be zero to 15. Exclamation mark, password again, okay, VTY, password in this case Cisco, okay, and login, okay, and last but not least, to configure a banner, MOTD, okay, open with a hex sign, unauthorized access is prohibited, hex sign to close it. And that's it. We have to actually create a template for the basic configuration for the devices. Okay. You can make use of a key control A okay, to actually select all the text, or you can make use of the edit button at the top to select all the text. Okay, followed by control C or copy. Okay, and just go to the router. In this case we are, since we are on we are going we have actually set the post name to R1. Let's go to R1. Go to enable mode, complete team mode. You must make sure that you're in this mode before you can make use of the paste, which is actually the configuration just now you have actually copied into memory to a paste, and that's it. You have actually configured your basic configuration of R1 itself. Okay, go to the text file again. In this case, we'll do it for R2, so just go to R2, change the hostname to R2, control C, con control C again, control A, control C. Go to R2, go to CRI, config T again, and paste. Okay, and that's it. You have R3 basic configuration. Same thing for R3. Change the host name to R3 now. Control A, Control C, go to R3, CRI, enable config T mode, paste. Okay, that's it for R3. Next, for S1, host name change to S1. Okay, but in this case of VTY, remember to change to 15 because, as I mentioned, 
switch have 16 VTY port. So go to S1 now. Same thing. Config key. Paste. Okay, go back to the text file again. S2 now. Oh no, S3 now. Control A, Control C. Go to switch. CRI enable. Config key mode. Paste. That's it. You have done all your basic configuration for the five devices in a short time of less than five minutes if you make use of this method okay so next we're going to configure the ipv4 ipv6 address on r1 itself as i mentioned r2 r3 pcb pcc has already been configured so let's go into interface in this case g0 slash 1 ip at in this case will be 172.30.10.1 Slash 24 is 255.255.255.0 Then let's configure our VV6 address VV6 address, global address is 201 DB8 ACAD colon A colon colon 1 Slash 64 For the global address for G Gigabit interface G01 IPv6 at for the link local address FEAT colon colon 1 Make sure you remember to use link local behind to signify that this is a link local address. Take note that today we are not making use of any EUI64 extension to fulfill the last 64 bit as we actually configure the full 64 bit as can be seen in this IPv6 address itself. Okay, and last but not least, do a no shot to ensure that the interface is up and running. So the other interface will be your serial interface 000, <laughs> for R1. Same thing again, IP address 10.1.1.1 slash 30 is 255.255.255.252 IPv6 address 201 db8 ACAD colon 12 colon colon 1 slash 64 for global aggregate address for serial interface 000 configure link local address also in this case is FE80 colon colon 1 link local okay as this is a serial DCE side of the serial interface make sure you configure your clock rate in this case we will make, we will make use of 2 million enter and last but not least do a no shot to up the interface just to verify that the interface is up and running do a show IP route okay, to make sure that you see two connected interface to ensure that the both links are up and running okay. so after configuring the basic IPv4 and IPv6 address all the devices should come equipped with IPv4 and IPv6 address on PCA itself, go to desktop click on IP configuration do the same thing case 172.30.30.3.172.30.10.3 subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 default gateway 172.30.10.1 okay, for IPv6 is 2001 db8 colon ACAD colon a colon colon a okay subnet mask we're going to use as can be seen is 64 okay and the uh, gateway is fe80 colon colon one just make sure everything is correct okay let's close the pc this is how you configure ipv4 and ipv6 address on the pc itself so we are going to start off with configuration of our read version 2 which involves sharing of network using IPv4 addresses but in this topology today take note that we are not going to involve G0 slash 0 as we are going to signify G0 slash 0 network as an ISP and we are going to make use of default route to reach that network okay so how to configure your RIP version 2 okay very simple just go to R1 again okay before we do, let's always do make use of the routing table to assist us in the configuration of our dynamic routing protocol process. Do a show IP route. Okay. 
so you can see there's two two okay let's start off by router rip remember version two always disable no auto summary okay okay and let's start off with our network command to involve the routing processes in this case there are two network one is 10.1.1.0 so sorry so zero and network 172.30.10.0 network okay to involve the G01 interface and the S0000 interface okay another command that I would like to introduce today is the passive interface command okay basically is to stop any basically is to stop any okay routing information or routing message to be sent out through the interface if it's not required because in this case you can see that for gigabit interface G0 slash 1 is connected to a switch or maybe it's even connected to a computer which is not a router and for dynamic routing protocol basically the process is for the routers to talk to each other and not for routers to talk to other people so there is no usefulness in allowing the router to send out routing messages or information through an interface that a device that is doesn't require it so the passive interface command will basically okay, prevent any routing message from being sending out through the interface which will give more effective bandwidth usage for other data information to be sent out through the interface okay. same thing let's go to R2 and enable the read processors to a show IP route okay to a show IP route and then start off by router rip version 2 no auto summary okay and flow by the network command in this case 10.1.1.0 and network 10.1.2.2.0 okay take note that we're not going to involve the 209.165 network as we're going to make use of a default route okay same thing go to r3 to a show IP route again okay then router read version 2 no auto summary okay and followed by the network command for the two connected network then dot two dot two dot zero and network one seven two dot thirty dot thirty dot zero okay same thing we're going to prevent any routing information from the cell through the interface that's not required so passive interface gigabit interface 0 slash 1 okay, and that's it for your read process let's look at our routing table again by doing a show IP route you can see that read process actually has been shared by the code R okay and the and the admin distance for our read process basically is 120 and basically this is how we actually implement read version 2 for the router itself and let's go to the last stage which is to configure a default route on r2 to reach the 209.165 network which i mentioned that is to signify our this isp network okay so ip route okay hope that i still remember how to configure a default route 0 .0 .0, 0 0.0.0 0 0.0.0 which is 8880 8, Followed by the next hop address to the network is 165 120.165.201.2 and that okay. Just to take note that now only R2 know how to reach the ISP network which is PCB using the default route. But R1 and R3 still doesn't know how to reach PCB which is the ISP using default route. So we are going to make use of the read process to share the default route. And we still remember previously Okay. when we want to share a static route we make use of command redistribute static okay so for default route is a different command it's not redistribute static for default route the command basically is default information or originate okay so remember to share static route among read processors is redistribute static to share default route is default information originate okay after sharing that let's go do the router Look at the routing table again. Okay, you can see that now 
on top of a uh, R, the code R that signified that network has been set to read. There's a R as the read to show that the default route has been shared from R2 to R1. Okay, similarly, if you look at R3, we will be seeing the same thing. Okay, and basically, this is how we actually configure our read version 2. Next, we're going to go on to read next generation, which is the enabling route dynamic routing protocol called RIP, okay, which making use of IPv6. So for RIP next generation, uh, it is a bit more easier because for RIP next generation or RIP for IPv6, we need to actually call, enable the RIP process on interface that require it. That means that we need to go to, into each and every interface rather than configuring in using the router RIP command. Okay, but always remember when we need to configure any IPv6 as I mentioned, always remember that you need to enable your IPv6 unicast routing. So now let's go into our interface G0 says one command basically is IPv6 RIP okay followed by a name to signify the process and this name is basically local significant means that this router use it only, the other router don't have to know followed by enable okay and that's it enable read process on this interface okay but remember that read r1 have two interface that need to be involved in read that's why we need to go into the other serial interface do the same command again ipv6 read test one enable okay and that's it you have enable read process on the two interface for ipv6 same thing go to r2 Okay, but R2 take note that we're not going to involve the gigabit interface G0 set 0, only the serial interface. So 00 IPv6 read test 2. We're going to make you a different name. Anyway, this name is only local significant as I mentioned. Okay, you can see that if I never in, in, if I never configure my IPv6 unicast routing, there will be an error message IPv6 routing not enabled. Okay. So let's do our IPv6 unicast routing. Go into interface again. IPv6 read. Test 2. Enable. Okay. Go into interface again. 001. So sorry. Level 1. Okay. IPv6 read. Test 2. Enable. Okay. And that's it. We have configured your read process. Same thing, go to R3. Okay, ensure that you enable your IPv6 unicast routing. Go into the interface to configure your IPv6. Read. In this case, we will use a different name, test3. Enable. Interface G0 slash 1. IPv6. Read. Test3. Enable. Okay, and that's it. You have enabled your read process. Let's look at our route. Routing table for IPv6 now by doing a show IPv6 route. Okay, you can see that. Okay, network has been shared through RIP, which is indicated by the code R. Okay, okay. So let's go back. Similarly to what we have done for IPv4 for R2, which is to configure a default route for IPv4 to reach the PCB network, we're going to do the same thing for IPv6. So IPv6 route colon colon slash zero for default route or in this case we we'll make you a 64 since it's basically the last 64 bit is still going to remain the same followed by the network that we're going to connect to, to next hop address 201 db8 acad colon b colon colon b which is the actually the ip address of pcb because the next hop address from R2 to reach the PCB basically is this address. Enter. Okay. So for IPv6 to share the default route, the command is similar. It's default information originate. But you take note that we don't have a router read, which is basically a, 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 a block of command that actually correspond to the whole read process. But we actually enable read on individual interface. So means that we need to actually go into every interface itself and basically enable this default sharing of default route 
so IPv6 read test2 which is the name that we use for the read process followed by the default information originate okay same thing go to interface S001 IPv6 read test2 default information originate again okay and that's it let's go to R1 to double check to show IPv6 route to ensure that our default route has been shared okay, to R1 and R3 and that's it for this lab which involves IPv4 which is read version 2 and read next generation which involves IPv6